This video takes a look at Module 1, Lesson 3, which deals with identifying proportional and non-proportional relationships in tables. Um, today, you guys are going to examine situations to determine whether two quantities are in a proportional relationship. Um, you know you got this when you can answer the problem set questions correctly before you check your answer. And our standard is down here, recognize and represent proportional relationships between quantities. All right, so I ready will be taken at the end of the year. We need at least a year and a half growth. And our mastery goal is to get at least 80% on our sticker chart. All right, example number one. So I will walk through this, but if you want to read through this and answer this on your own, um, you can. You have the skills to do it. So if you want to pause and try it on, on your own, you can, but I will go through this. You have been hired by your neighbors to babysit their children on, fire, on Friday night. You are paid $8 per hour. Complete the table relating your pay to the number of hours worked. So this eight is what is called, and I'll make type it so you guys can see it nice and easy. This is what is going to be called our constant of proportionality. Now, previously, we have refer referred to that as like unit rate. It's in scale factor. It's the same idea, but that eight per one per hour is our constant of proportionality. So that means we take our hours work and you multiply by eight to get the pay. So for instance, the first one is $8. That is the unit rate. You're at one hour's work, $8 per hour. One times eight is eight. Now, second one would be 16 because two times eight get sixteen dollars sorry about that and the third one you would end up with 24 and I'm gonna pause here I want you guys to go through and fill out the rest of this table um, when it is a fraction for instance when we have four and a half here and it, it may help to take that four and a half to a decimal before you multiply but go and fill out the rest of this table and then try to answer this question, which says, based on the table above, is the pay proportional to the hours worked? How do you know? Once you're done with the table and that question, come back and check the video. If you filled out your table appropriately here, these are the values you should have gotten for your pay. Um, and the constant of proportionality here is consistently 8. Um, now, the equation here, if I assign this, make this x and this y, right? Our equation is our pay equals 8 times x. So this is our equation that represents this situation. Now, it's important you label what is x and what is y because if you don't, um, then it's unclear what you're multiplying by 8 like are you multiplying the hours worked or the pay by eight? So it is very important you label your variables. What is X, what is Y? All right, now based on the table, is the pay proportional? How do you know? It is proportional because the constant of proportionality, which can also be called the scale factor or the unit rate, is the same for all values in the table. In this case, it happens to be 8. So you always multiply your x by 8 to get your y every single time. Okay. Also, all ratios of pay to hours work simplify to 8 to 1. So if all of your ratios simplify down to the same ratio, they're also equivalent. So you can use either of those strategies, looking at making sure that multiplicative number, that constant of proportionality, scale factor, unit rate, is the same, which in this case it is, it's always 8, or you can simplify down the ratios and make sure they simplify down to the same ratio. That will also make it the same. All right, for exercises 1 through 3, what you're going to do is you're going to examine the tables, and you're going to say yes or no with whether or not the tables represent a proportional relationship. And then you are going to justify your answer, so that's providing support of why your answer is true or not. So go through for each of those tables for exercise one through three, say yes or no, and justify 
Once you are done with all three, come back and check the video to ensure you got the correct answers. For exercise one, this table is one of the first times you're exposed to a relationship that is actually not proportional. So the snowfall y is not proportional to time x because the constant proportionality is not equivalent, meaning not the same, for all ratios in the table. Um, the first ratio, 2 to 10 here, the constant proportionality is 5. Even though all of the other ones are equivalent to each other, because the first one is different, this table is not proportional. Okay. Also, the ratios don't all simplify down to the same ratio, so therefore this is not proportional. So table one is not proportional. Having even one ratio that's different than the others makes the whole table not proportional. Now number two is proportional. The constant of proportionality here happens to be one third. And what that means essentially is you divide x by three to get y. It doesn't matter here that the order um, doesn't continually increase, right? It goes six, nine, then 24, then three. All you're looking at is the individual comparisons, and in this case, y is always one-third of x, okay? Also, all ratios would simplify down um, to the same value, but table two is proportional because it's always divided by three or times one-third to get from x to y. Table three here, this one should have been pretty easy. This is for sure proportional. Um, because all ratios in the table um, are equivalent. In this case, the ratio is always um, cost to amount of candy is two to one. So if you're working this way, the ratio is two to one. If you're working from left to right, the ratio would be one to two because remember, order matters. Um, but the easiest way to kind of do it probably is just to look at the constant of proportionality. And in this case, it is times two for every value of x to get to y every single time. All right, now looking at number four, um, number four says Randy is planning to drive from New Jersey to Florida. Every time Randy stops for gas, he records the distance he traveled in miles and the total number of gallons used. Why is he doing that? Who knows? Maybe he's doing that activity where he needs um, money back. Maybe he's, he's moving or doing some business trip, so he needs to be refunded. Assume that the number of miles driven is proportional to the number of gallons. So... That is an incredibly important point because the only reason we can fill out this table is because we're assuming proportionality, meaning we are assuming that multiplicative number is consistent. We cannot assume unless the question tells us to, but because it does, you know that constant of proportionality should be consistent all the way through. So with that said, I want you guys to go through. There are one, there are four blanks here. Go and fill out the floor blanks for number four, then come back and check the video to make sure you did it correctly. So looking at our table here, um, underneath four gallons consumed, you should have got 108 miles. Um, above 189 miles, you should have got seven gallons. And below 10 gallons, you should have got 270 miles. And with 12 gallons, you should have got 324 miles. Our equation here, our multiplicative number is 27. That is our constant of proportionality. That is our unit rate. That is our scale factor. We are multiplying x times 27 um, to get y. Notice I labeled y and x here. Okay. Now, down here in blue is some additional information if you are struggling. It is not necessary to write this down unless you feel like you need additional notes. All right. Basically, because the quantities are proportional, we can divide to find the, the value of the ratio, which is that constant of proportionality. 54 divided by 2 gets 27. So that tells you you need to multiply 2 times 27 to get 54. Same thing dividing the 216 by 8. You get that multiplicative constant of proportionality of 27. So if the number of gallons are given, you multiply it by 27 to get the miles. Now, on the other hand, like we have here, um, when you're given the miles driven, you're working backwards, you divide by 27. So that's how we got 7 here. 
okay? So basically to get from y to x, you divide by 27. To get from x to y, you multiply by 27. If you feel like you need to write down this information, please do so. If not, uh, we're heading forward to the lesson summary. And here, um, a type of quantity is proportional if there is a constant number that you are multiplying by. Very basic. It needs to be the same number you are multiplying x by to get to y every single time. If just one row is different, it is not proportional. All right. It does not matter what order it's in. It can be increasing, can be increasing, then decreasing, whatever. But that number to get from x to y needs to be the same constant number, the same constant of proportionality. Now, constant of proportionality is the same as scale factor. So I'll, I'll write this down up here for you guys. So constant of propor proportionality is scale factor which is the unit rate. These are all the same thing. We already know how to calculate unit rate. We already know about scale factor, constant of proportionality is just a different word that means the same thing. All right, so at this point we're at the problem set. Now there is not much room here, so I would highly suggest you take a separate sheet of paper. Um, when you're graded for your book, part is the problem set and I can read your work. So I take a separate sheet of paper and answer these nine questions. When you are done, come back and check the video to make sure you've done the problem set correctly, and that will be it for Lesson 3, 7th um, Grade Math, Module 1. Finishing up with the problem set here, hopefully you took time to write this on a separate sheet because it was kind of cramped, and that's just commitment to quality, making sure your work is the best, and sometimes we simply need more room. Um, the first table was proportional, the second table was not, and the third table was. Um, this also asked you to explain, so if you just put yes, no, yes, it's not good enough. The explanations are down here. Um, why is proportional? Because the constant of proportionality for all values in table one is four. All right. For the second one, there is not a consistent number you multiply by. So for instance, to get from 3 to 15 is times 5, but to get from 4 to 17, it's 4 and a quarter. Then it would be 3 and 8 tenths, and then 3 and 5 tenths. That number is not consistent, therefore number 2 is not a proportional relationship. Number 3 is, um, the constant of proportionality here is actually 2 thirds, or 0.6 repeating. Okay, You find that number by dividing if you don't see it right away. All right, number four, um, is the price proportional? Yes. Um, there is a constant value, a constant of proportionality of 3,500. Once again, if you don't see it right away, you divide, and you figure out if it's true for all values. In this case, it is. Um, and I've even wrote the equation up here, y equals 3,500 x, meaning you multiply your ounces of coffee by 3,500 to get your price. Um, in a 20 ounce bag, so that means you would multiply 20 times 3,500 and you would get $7. So B is $7, A is yes. Moving down to number five, um, this is also proportional. Um, in this case, the constant of proportionality is 950. That is your unit rate, that is your scale factor, okay? meaning you would multiply the number of people times nine and a half, x being the number of people, to get your cost, okay? Um, the constant of proportionality here, or your unit rate, or your scale factor is $9.50. So you multiply your number of people times 950 to get your y. This is an example of what your table should look like. Here's your explanation. Make sure you do every part of this question. This question looks small, but it says create a table um, and then explain. So you should have done both of those things. The equation was extra, but I want you guys to get in the habit of writing the equations. Number six, um, this is proportional. Um, so in this case, once again, it's asking us to create a table. It's asking us to answer this question. That star was awful. <laughs> and it's asking us to explain. Okay, 
the constant of proportionality here is three-fifths, or six-tenths if you want to use decimals, meaning you take the page's gill reads, you multiply it by six-tenths, and you'll get the pages his daughter can read. Gill in this case, in my table, is X. The daughter is Y. Um, so you multiply X times 6 tenths to get Y. Or you multiply X times 3 fifths to get Y. 6 tenths here and 3 fifths are the same number. Just one's written as a decimal and one is written as a fraction. So yes, this is proportional. This is a table to help support the reasoning. Moving down to number seven, um, this is not proportional because if I look, let's say I look at this second ratio, one parent to five, three children, that is times three, right? Going down one, one parent to five children, that is times five. So I can just stop there and immediately figure out that's not proportional. This first ratio of zero to zero doesn't really help because zero times any number gets zero. So I have to actually look down at these other values to see, all right, clearly I'm not multiplying by that same constant of proportionality to get from X to Y. So this is not proportional. Here is a more detailed explanation in blue. Moving on to number eight. Eight is also not proportional because that constant of proportionality is not consistent. It starts um, this first ratio, one to 250, that's a unit rate. It has a constant of proportionality of 250. But then the second one, you multiply by 300. That's not equivalent to 250. And then if you see down here, you'll get these other multiplicative numbers, which you just get by dividing, and you notice they're not the same. Okay? And keep in mind, they're all different, but if even one is different, the table's not proportional. So there is no way number eight, the number of cars sold to the money earned is proportional. Now, number uh, nine, your number nine, it's going to be hard to compare to mine because it asks you to make your own example, um, but it needs to be not proportional. In this case, um, I said Keisha is keeping track of how much money she has saved. She is trying to buy the newest gaming system, so she organizes uh, her work in the table below. So it also asks to create a table. So um, week one, I had her make $75. Week two, she's at $150. Week three, $200. And week four, $300. Now, the constant of proportionality or scale factor or unit rate is not the same. Therefore, these are not equivalent ratios, meaning this does not represent a proportional relationship. Okay? Um, in this case, this is times 75. This is also times 75 here. So with the first two ratios, we have a situation where it's proportional. But once we introduce the third and the fourth, it no longer becomes proportional because 3 times 75 is not 200. Okay? Um, neither is 4 times 75 for that matter. Does not get 300. Okay? So that is it for proportionality in tables. Um, you can now move on to lesson 3.